September 14th, 10.15 a.m. Oh! Ooh, I love this art style already. I already know I'm gonna love this game. Do I walk around with Waz? No, it's a click. Don't we look cute? And our little tattoos. Oh. Hello and welcome to our funeral director. Uh, from Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to meet you. My name is Matthew, and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and help with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear a joke about a hearse driver? I tell you when I come by in a bit. Looking forward to, uh, to working together. Think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Cheers and good luck. Matthew J, funeral director. Oh, Rose and Daughter's funeral home. Uh, welcome to our new funeral director. Here we go. Hello, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie, as you told me she likes to be she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career with us at Rose and Daughter's funeral home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home with our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we can all get to know each other a little bit better as well. Sincerely, Amy Rose, founder and director. Cool. Alright, so that was this email. Okay. Uh, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. You're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office preparation room, you'll find your cremation station, uh, cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously, obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experiences working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best regards. Sweet, she's nice. Ooh, Jen Love. Huh, guess my subject lines to you. Wait, good luck, you beautiful and smart baby you are. Huh, guess my subject lines to you should start being more professional now that we are business professionals. I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating. Sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. Guess it's not just something I really think about much. Um, I should really, I, I should look more into this. I learned more about your world and industry because I, as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Speaking of being professional, my museum gig is amazing. Can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London on serial killer capital Canada. Oh, to work in a museum. Like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when I, we Skype. My stories require you to see my face and that you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. <laughs> I also, I signed you up for Funerals Monthly Newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift. Love you. Super proud of you. Gift. Love you, love you, love you. Jen. Museum creator. London Pathology Museum. That's cool. Oh, okay. So that's a response. Uh, maybe we should read. Hold on. We'll read the Funeral Monthlies and then we'll get to the response. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Each month we bring you a newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry. Great. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. Can't really believe we have to write this one out, but since we said uh, we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are. Because this definitely was, or this is definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time, and we understand that. But here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Genuinely following the guides of don't be a jerk should work. One, don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but at this time, in a place to disengage, uh, if you have been on your cell phone, don't do so inside the funeral home. Don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people the space they might need. Don't get drunk. Yeah, seriously, that's a big one. Everyone could deal with their feelings in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful when the grieving family and friends. When with the grieving family and friends. Happily remnants. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the deceased can be a productive part in the, of the healing process. Give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple thinking of you can go a long way. It's very true. Dress appropriately. Well, this looks like will change based on the customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Give a gift or sign the registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card. 
but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even be just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows that you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and be helpful. Aw, this is actually really sweet and helpful. I love that. And then our actual thing. Uh, from Amy, today's task. Hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you were really friendly. And he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body, body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier. That's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Miss Garcia, Miss Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased of their loved ones. You'll and their loved ones. You'll find Miss Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon, Amy Rose. Cool. Okay. Uh, dear Mia, of course, we'll happily oblige your request for no embalming. Oh. Special request for my mother's funeral. Also, is this like we're just tied into this too? Oh, there she is. Okay. Um, let's read the bottom. Dear Amy, we're happy to be with Rose and Daughters for my mother's funeral. We understand that there are usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you can kindly not embalm my mother, that would be greatly appreciated, and we will proceed with the closed casket for the service. I just know she wouldn't have wanted her death to be to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought hard, so hard to beat her heart disease and to live healthily, it would be a shame for her to have her final moments be to be a counter to the way she lived. Thank you for anything that you can do to help us in the matter. That's sweet. That's sweet and smart. Aww. Of course, we'll happily oblige your request for no embalming and for a closed casket. Casket. I'll ensure our funeral director receives the request, and then she just e emails us, showing us the rest. Cool. I'll get right to it. And there she is. Dang, <laughs> just the mouth open, man. <laughs> just. Hi, Mrs. Garcia. There she is. At least she's covered up. This is the prep room where you'll prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you're just going to clean the body. Okay. So, eye caps. Oh, that's the thing. Those are the spiky things that keep the eyes closed. Glue. Razor, cotton balls, needle, lotion, scalpel, tubing, cannula. I don't think we're using the cannula. And then that's the fluid choker. So let's just... Yeah. Alright. Clean her up a little. There we go. I like that. Showing respect for her. That's it. You're done. Miss Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and putting her in the casket. Oh, okay. It's time to go, Mrs. Gar it's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You're responsible for taking care of the deceased's body, but it's also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Oh! The follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Oh, so we actually go and attend. Oh yeah, look, we're dressed differently. Okay, that makes sense. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Hi. Pay respects, pay respects, pay respects. Pay respects. Who are you paying respects to? Her. Hello. Yeah, heard the family specifically said no embalming. Thought it was mandatory, like required by law. But I guess not. Embalming wears me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? Seems strange to be put using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? Oh! At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. <laughs> Stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. Oh! Are you mom? Hello? I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I, act I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. Oh! Hello, little kid. Mommy? hungry when can we go yeah kids don't really have like the the scent the like the sense of the importance of this hello we usually don't do small talk uh we don't small talk wait we usually don't small talk a lot at these things at least that's what i was always taught yeah you just kind of keep it keep low hello she would have hated these paintings she was so particular 
Yeah. At least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's... Yeah, I guess. Ugh! Pay respects. Aww. Another beautiful life lived. Alright. Goodbye. Also, kid, there's snacks here. Come on, eat it. Shut up. Leave mom alone. October 11th. 10 a.m. 10.09. Oh, we're cleaning. Okay. And I guess this is what we do our cremations in. Yes, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Another month? Yes, I'm reading. Are these all new emails? They are. Okay. I'm so frustrated right now. Hi, Jennifer. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight lacers liver specimen we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907, and the liver is tapered inwards from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her cork corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was a super popular, and while people associated it with fainting or hysteria, uh, it's actually been associated with visceropdosis, which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen, right? Which is super unsettling, but also can be caused by being pregnant. So, too long didn't read. Of course, it's probably messed up some bones, but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescension of the con yeah, condescension about my wardrobe that also implies I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, so she wears corsets. Got it. These are the kind of things I specifically research, yet I'm treated like I know nothing about having a day, Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, is this another? Oh, this is another part. Oh, another rant. Can I rant just for a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody, <coughs> male colleagues, get on my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse. So it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though dress codes are such sexist BS anyways. And like, I hate how their misogyny gets veiled in faux concern. Jen, I'm just worried you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to livers, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condescension is hurting my head. <laughs> uh, ugh, sorry, I'm out of source right now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Aw, she's going through a rough one. Alright, let's read here. Oh, sweet. Oh, she- Hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did with our mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family was so really gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. Getting to share some home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together was meant a lot. So what I'm saying is it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way. And I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Aww. Just passing this message along. Thanks for your hard work, Charlie. Oh, yay! That's so good. Uh, then monthly. Okay, so that this is probably our next job, right? Maybe. Okay, whoa, whoa, okay, okay, okay. Let's read this first. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture? We all know everyone wants to respect, uh, be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly. Be kind. Smile. Refrain from making inappropriate jokes. At least around the grieving family. Hey, sometimes pe some people do need a little bit of pick-me-up during such hard times. Who are we to judge? And a big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more to the formal, formal black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire, where people will wear black as a symbol for mourning? Black isn't universally the symbol for mourning, though. And if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice can mean accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese cultures, white is typically a color for funerals. For Islam, though, it is less about the color you're wearing and more about how modestly you're dress you dressed. Frame from wearing any elaborate jewelry and be respectful of your behavior. For Sikh funerals, color of the clothing isn't as important as is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule of for any funeral, no matter what, really. Depend remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is is appropriate to wear. If you're attending to support a friend, family member, or partner, 
this day is not about you. So be sure to wear, do whatever you can to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if it means not wearing what you're used to wearing at a funeral. Or even if it means asking how you can appropriately show your respects. I like that! That's really nice! And then Matthew Jeffrey. Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town. And I was thinking, strange, I know. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager, about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident. Totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so, the big day, we all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us, so we had at least three different cars full of us. Like clown cars, you know? <laughs> uh, we were in the processing procession of going to the cemetery. Somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out, some asshat driver who doesn't know how to, how to not get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Wow, nobody was hurt, thank god, but can you imagine getting that call? Anyways, one of my friends in the same car as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in the way that makes you not sure if they're really just crying or if they've gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed, and then we all started giggling because, like, go figure, life's messed up sometimes, you know? There's no morale. No point to that story, I guess. Just remember that story and I wanted to tell you. Because we work with death all the time and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what ac what it, that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, it has nothing to do with why I, be why I became a funeral director. That's a decision, that decision came totally later and is nothing unremarkable. Somebody has to do it and I have a strong stomach, so why not? See you in a bit, Charlie, Matthew, J. Okay. Learning a bit more about the people around us, about their stories, which I think is really nice. Oh, we can actually look at their website. Wow, that costs a lot. Dude, why are these so expensive? Holy cow. About Rose and Daughters. Rose and Daughters Funeral Home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal, affordable funeral services for all. Affordable? Fifty <laughs> percent uh, I'm proud to have carried on my family for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you ex recently experienced loss. Aww. Dang. Okay. Alright, let's see what our job is. Hi, Charlie! Uh, here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family is very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing and a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval, an elderly man, died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Best, Amy Rose. Uh, P.S. Charlie Deer, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. From all the height is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew. He knows. <laughs> Aww. She's so sweet. Oh, I didn't freaking accept it. Oopsies. Yeah, I'll accept it. Alright. Are we wearing- yeah, we're wearing proper gear. Hello, Mr. Duval. I'm, I'm gonna be, uh, Duval, why do, is that hair? Uh, traditional burials typically require embalming, which prefer, preserves the body and prevents from decomposing as quickly. Yep. Unless a family requests otherwise, all traditional burials uh, will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Click on the sponge and drag over the body to clean it. Alright. Let's get you spotless, Mr. Duval. Do we need to shave you? I wonder if we do. I would shave him. Yep, we are shaving him. Click on the razor and shave. Yeah. Oh, you look so nice now, Duval. Oh, I forgot that part. There you go, it's like donut sprinkles. <laughs> oh, in order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna give you a nice mas mas massage, Duval. Does it feel good? The eyeballs deflate once they st <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much I don't want to know. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag the eye cap on each eye sock to- Oh! Ah! There you go! 
To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Click and drag the glue. Okay, we're just gonna... There you go. Alright. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball in the mouth to give it shape. Oh, we just stuff it with cotton ball? To keep the mouth from opening, you need to suture it shut. Click and drag the needle uh, over the... Okay. Needle. Alright. Alright, Mr. Duval. Alright, how's that not noticeable? Click and drag the lotion to body moisturizer. It prevents the skin from drying out. Why aren't there gonna be clothes on it? Here we go. There you go. Alright. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck and make an incision. Here we go. There we go. You're going to need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube. There we go. Click on the canula and drag it uh, into the car carotid artery. This is how you'll get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream. Oh! Now you'll need to connect the embalming machine to the cannula. Oh, craft some additional tubing and drag it to the cannula. Okay. Wait, isn't this the cannula? What's the cannula? This is the cannula. There we go. Click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on. Ugh. Oh, we have to massage still. In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, you'll have to massage the body throughout them. Okay. Massage. Ooh. Massage. Ooh. And a massage. Is that feeling good? Yeah. Is that great? That must feel so nice. There we go. There we go. All right. Man, we have to use all of that. All right, get you some Kool-Aid. You know, you're gonna feel really good after this. You're gonna feel so alive. I. What? Huh? Not me. Great. Now let's sew up the incision. Click and drag the needle over it to close it. All right. Let's seal that little hole that we made. Huh? Almost done. You'll need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on the choker and then click to hold the evidence. Oh. Ow. Ew. Alright, that's your stomach. Alright, and then let's get your small intestine. Yep. Is that your appendix? Alright. Oh, that's not all of it. Okay. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. Yeah. Where have you been eating? And you're done. Mike will take care of Mr. Duval's makeup, as well as dressing and putting him in a casket. I want to do the makeup. Alright, we're all dressed up. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Hey, what are you doing on your phone? Disrespectful. Well, he's a kid. Let's pay our respects. Aww. Let's talk to everyone. Hello. He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park. Play catch. He loves playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. <laughs> Not the time! child at least he's being quiet about it so strange not seeing most people wearing white white yeah i think it's different for different family members can't remember gone to many traditional funerals it's mostly white but like definitely not red no matter what Ooh, no red to a funeral i have not been to one of these in a while very 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 long time uh thankfully Came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah. One minute you're laughing, having fun. And the next, poof. Person is gone. Just like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about it for too long. Like staring at the sun. I start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Mm-hmm. So weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gets you in the weird feels, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. December 2nd, 10.22 a.m. Dang, we're skipping months. Ooh, are we actually going to work on cremation this time? It's cool that we're learning about the different processes. I like it. All right, we got a bunch of emails to read. All right, uh, let's start from the bottom. If you have been a long time subscriber to our emails or follow us on social media, you have no doubt heard about the misgendering that transgender people are at times subjected dur to, to, to during funerals. Really? 
There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes be overruled by their families and have had their hair cut are buried under the wrong names and subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary announcements. Wow, that's awful. I care a lot about this. We believe in treating every person with the same level of compassion, respect, and care. Yes, as you do. This absolutely extends to pronouns and respecting the deceased wishes as per lived experiences. CDC Funeral Director's Handbook on Death Registration and Fetal Death Reporting offers the fraught directive, enter male or female based on observation. Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body, or other, resources, or other sources, enter unknown. Do not leave this item blank. Leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained bias, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own accurate observations. California has passed what is known to be the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate must reflect the deceased gender identity as they lived it. That's perfectly understandable and reasonable. So a step in the right direction. People who are trans deserve the same respect and death that people who are cisgender receive. Misgendering in death takes away this respect, can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survive the deceased. So what can we do as funeral directors? Listen to the people who come in your office. In America, especially some marriages, may not be recognized as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage, but this doesn't mean you're not dealing with two people who have loved each other in the same way as, other, as another couple. Listen, learn, always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure that the deceased receives the utmost respect on their burial. If funeral is to honor deceased, then let them do that honor them. Yeah, I mean, literally, it's their final moments where everyone says goodbye and you're gonna, like, disrespect it? That's stupid. Matthew! Oh, okay. Hey, Matthew, this is embarrassing, but seems I miscalculated some of our income and I don't have enough to pay you this week. Oh, no, is the business going down? Would it be terribly inconvenient if I cut you a check for next week instead? If you need the money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible terrible about this whole thing. I can cut you a check from my personal account if need be. So sorry about this. I'm sure you won't happen again. Dang, we're not doing well. I mean, that's a good thing and a bad thing, you know, not doing well because people are living, but like, losing money. <sighs> I don't like the look of this, not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months, but maybe you're aware of the trouble Amy ha has been having. A small mom and pop shop like Rose and Daughters can't compete with the bigger guys. Anyway, don't tell Amy I sent this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hearse through a car wash. Two roads, one stone. And swinging back to the home. Do you want anything? A beef and cheddar? <laughs> I'm going to take the hearse through the drive-thru. Of course, it freaks people out. I love it. Do you think it's so awkward? Let me know. Heading on 15 minutes. Ah, oh, so she doesn't know that they sent this to us. Okay. Dang. Alright. Uh, here we go. Meet cutes for death positive cuties. <laughs> Charlie, I was doing some reading. I know you hate when I try to give you dating advice, but hear me out. There's this dating site that specifically is for people working in the death industry. Okay, so maybe I'm a little worried for you. You haven't mentioned anybody new since the breakup of 2014 that we, uh... We'll never speak of again of after, again after this moment. <laughs> but you're always saying how tired you get of people being scared to ask about your day. So maybe meeting somebody in the industry isn't the worst idea? Just promise me you'll consider it, okay? It's harder for me to make sure you're seeing sunlight when I'm all the way across the ocean. I know you look like a babe with pale skin and witchy gothy aesthetics are super hot right now. But vitamin D is still a good thing. Very true. I need to go outside even. Um, rant over. Um, I'm going to try it out because it turns out people get super scared off when you tell them you work in the museum full uh, Filled with dead bodies. I've always wanted to go to one of those museums, but I feel like I would get too creeped out Do you know? Uh, do you know how not interesting other people find teratomas? Charlie, I didn't know we were this weird <laughs> to outside people I've been spoiled by having the best friend who is as much of a weirdo as I am Miss you. Let's grab a bottle of wine for our next Skype date. P.S. If you sign up for Dead Meat, isn't that the best name for the death industry dating website? Uh, Tinder rules applies. You have to like me if you come across my profile or whatever. I'm not sure how it works just yet, though. <laughs> That's cute. Um, passing this on. Thank you for the note. 
Hi, Amy. Thank you for the wonderful evening and your staff put together for my father's funeral. He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. Aww. All right, let's see what this next one is. Today's funeral is from one who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Please don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions. All right, let's get to it. Oh, there she is. And why is it gold or is that like cardboard? Isn't it supposed to be like something like cardboard, right? Maybe I'm not, I don't know. Oh, before we cremate Miss Hall, we must prepare her body. Mrs. Hall's family brought clothing and jewelry for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process as to not damage them. Let's start by removing her necklace. Click and draw the necklace, place on the purple tray. We'll, to place, uh, we'll place the necklace in the urn with Miss Hall. Ah, that's that makes sense. We need to be able to identify Mrs. Hall's remains after she's been cremated. Click and drag the round identification tag and place it in the coffin. Oh, is this metal? Great, Mrs. Hall is all set to be cremated now. That's it. I do this in Kindman Remedy. I know a little thing or two about this. Alright. Oh, is this her? Wait. What? This is the cre cremulator. Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone fragments. Using the cremulator will break these bone fabrics down into ash-like remains. Oh, I didn't know that! Let's start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Click on the urn and drag it. Cremula Wait, what? Click on the urn and drag it in the cremulator under the nozzle. Oh, I see. I drag the bone fabrics. Okay, so I, I, I kind of understand now. I watched- I don't know if anyone watched the freaking- No, what's it- what's the- with the guy- Jeffrey Dahmer? that stupid Netflix series, it kind of showed that the, it didn't burn away, but like, oh, I just didn't, I don't know, I didn't put two and two together. Alright. Alright. Oh, that's so... Do you, how often do you clean this? Do you, like, make sure you, like, you don't, you're not mixing people here? Now all the bones have been processed. Click and drag the urn back onto the counter. Okay. Uh, make sure to put Mrs. Hall's necklace into the urn. Don't forget it. Identification. Lid. All right, all done. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor, parlor and present it alongside with some flowers. Oh yeah, there's. I never thought about a funeral with just an urn. That's nothing that ever came across my mind. Oh, that's very interesting. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I mean they sell. They they do it too. I thought you would have like a casket funeral and then like you would cremate them, but this makes more sense. This is nice, in a weird way. She liked that we're all here, talking. She always try to keep the family together. The food is delicious. I know, that's a weird- that's weird. These crab cakes are perfect. Nice. Caring about food in a weird time. Glad she's cream. she was cremated and not in like an open casket or something. Seeing her like that? I don't know if I could've. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would've liked that. She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up, not once. Oh, my heart for him. Oh. Oh, man. She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Change the music then. I don't know what I would want. Gangnam Style. The Search. Those songs. February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Alright. What we got? Wow, we got a lot. Oh, okay. Keeping protecting our earth with green burials. You lived your life mindful of the environment, doing your part to reduce pollution, and generally help out where you can. So why not continue doing that even in death? At least, that's the thinking for a lot of people who are turning to green for or natural burials. Natural cemeteries are becoming more popular and are focused on funerals. Mainly, it's that bodies aren't allowed to be involved with chemicals that can damage the environment, and bodies must be buried in a biodegradable shroud or casket. Not only is this better for the environment, it's also cheaper. At Union Cemetery in Ontario, Ontario Canada, a natural bur burial is just over $1,000. So better for the people, the environment, just maybe not so good for big businesses. Let's not forget, people, this is still a business after all. But why go green? 
Uh, green burials help preserve natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, protect the health of those preparing bodies, and restore pr preserve natural habitats. Embalming fluids tend to contain formaldehyde, and funeral directors report a higher incidence of leukemia. Going green and not using toxic chemicals for embalming helps protect funeral directors while at the same time lessening the impact we have on the environment after we're gone. We're here at Funerals Monthly thinking- uh, Funerals Monthly think green burials are pretty cool. What do you think? There's a burial where you can turn yourself into a tree. Well, not turn yourself, but like you feed it into a tree. I thought that was always cool. Jen, Charlie, Challenger Productions. I've been playing a new game when things are slow at work. It's called Tales from the Crypt Sweeper. Get it? Get it? It's like Minesweeper, but way harder. Like seriously, it's really, really difficult. And I thought my Minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at the hotel for three years, but I must have gotten rusty. Anyways, instead of mines, you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghosts. The main character is also kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? High score gets to pick the restaurant we go to when one of us is in town next. Oh, I love her. She's such a freaking bestie. Um, hi, Amy. Uh. Oh. Okay, let's see. Hold on. This is actually some serious stuff about the previous people we did. Uh, hi, Amy. I know this email might be a bit odd, but you said if I was ever having troubles, I should reach out and you know, you would know somebody I could talk to about all this. I just I don't know what to do now. I know my grandmother had lived a f full good life and she was very happy and she's not in any pain now, but I still feel feel empty, Amy. Never felt this empty before. What am I supposed to do now? I thought I was stronger than this. Can you refer to me to someone to talk to? Don't want to freak out my mom right now. She's dealing with enough with work and the will and trying to just be the best mom she can. I just need somebody to tell me that it will be okay. Thank you. Sorry for being an inconvenience. Oh no, you're not being an inconvenience. My heart. <laughs> my heart melts for him. I thought I would forward this to you in situations like this. We typically connect people like Ryan with a grief counselor or other professionals who can really help them. Sometimes we get emails like this when people don't know where else to turn. It's difficult and family isn't the, old, the most reliable for some people. Usually I'd be happy to connect him, but I'm feeling a little tired today. Not my usual self and it would be good for you to start building these kind of relationships on your own. You're a treasure. Aww. Is she gonna be okay? I hope the business is doing a bit better. Okay, so... Alright, here we go. Hi, Amy. I'm so eternally grateful that you were able to accommodate our request for my sister's funeral. It was a beautiful service. She would have been happy. That's such a weird thing to say, isn't it? Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Yep, Charlie thought you would like this sweet. So she was happy. A news about the future of Rose... Oh, no. <gasps> no! Oh, hi, all. It is with a very heavy heart that I write to let you know that Rose and daughter will no longer be in business. Had no idea how to start this email and resources I googled told me that it would be best in the easiest way to break the ice. Be direct but remorseful, Google said. <laughs> the truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose our services. It was a memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways, and you've all become like family. Including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighborhood, and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations than we are, that can take on more businesses and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. So, we've been bought, or I sold, either way soon, Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc., a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral for tax purposes. Though honestly, I'm trying hard not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. I don't know how to feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. Sign the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. I feel bad. They have good reputation and I've agreed to keep you all on. That was one of my stipulations. I would sell as long as you weren't without a job. Sorry I didn't tell you in a more personal way. Would have loved a company lunch, but I admittedly didn't have the tar heart to tell you in person. 
This was much easier for me. Please understand. Sincerely, Amy Rose, founder and director. Oh, man. Hi, Amy. You asked if there was any special instructions we wanted to pass along. Just please cremate my father. He has a pacemaker, too. The doctor told me that it would need to be removed. Oh. Uh, cremation pacemaker. Please see the note below about the pacemaker. They could be tricky. So, do we have to, like, lay them out? Or cut it out? Oh, this is... Man. I feel so bad. Yeah, we are cutting out. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any of us for, to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker. We'll need to remove it before cremation. The doctors couldn't remove it? Because pacemakers have batteries. They'll explode inside the hot heat of cremation machine. We'll definitely not want that. Let's start by removing his pacemaker. Alright. You can see the pacemaker. Click on the forceps. Oh, it's just right there, huh? There it is! Uh, do we suture? I guess not. Mr. Reyes is all set to be cremated now. I guess not. He doesn't need it. That's true. Dang. Alright, he's all nice and pretty in a beautiful vase. Urn. Uh, yep, bone fragments. Yep. I know the I I got it. I got it. I got it. Is that all? Nice. Yep. Put it alongside some flowers. Dang. Aww. Hello. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know if he ever seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. Aw, don't say that. Of course he liked you. You wouldn't be here if otherwise. I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me, so that figures. Oh, that sucks. What do you want me to, what do you want to do after this? Pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? It's so weird. I don't even know what you would talk about in funerals. Did you ever clear up the air with your father? No. We talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it. Stubborn. Dang. Is there still more? February 28th. So two weeks in. Oh, man. Oh, there's less emails! Thanks to avoid saying at a funeral. Welcome back. Now we rarely do... I don't know that word. List a soul. List... Uh, whatever. Uh, but for this month's new letter, we thought, uh, whatever would be best way to deliver this month's advice. What not to say at a funeral. We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, and since that's such a personal is issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people. But fortunately, we can deliver a bit more solid advice on what not to say to someone who is grieving. So here it is. Funerals Monthly's top five things to not say at a funeral. At least they're no longer suffering. This is true. Nobody wants to hear it. It's probably not your place to dictate who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best. Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk. Just don't say it. Oh, okay. Were they saved? No religious statements. Just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views. Uh, not only it's not always- it's- wait, not only is it not always comforting, it can also be insulting. They're with the angels now. See above's note, then rinse and repeat. Okay. Let me know how I can help. This one's tricky. You want to help, but those uh, in mourning won't ask. Won't always ask for help. If you want to help, suggest specific things. For example, for if you need to baby someone to babysit the kids, actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them, take them to their favorite restaurant, or buy tickets to see a movie together. Okay. I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people still want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will. Ask first. For a quicker version of this list can be applied in any situation. Don't say stuff for the sake of saying stuff. Just say I'm sorry if you don't know what to say. I 
kind of get this it but it's also very situational like all these can be situational in my opinion because it you have to know the person that you're with right you know the friend you're with you know the family member and you know what would be best for them so to me this is all situational this is like if you're like a stranger and you're talking to someone new i think that's more for anything jen jen uh you hate mushrooms so much i found the perfect thing for you I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker. What? <laughs> look what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it. I'm writing you on my phone so I don't feel like Googling it right now. Anyways, the idea is it's a biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with people call a biomix, uh, mushrooms and other microorganisms that helps decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the bodies and provide nutrients for the soil and for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. I'll just be like, it'll just be like Hannibal. Wait, don't people, don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Love you, think about it. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, being a mushroom sounds so weird. I want all your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. I like that idea, but seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm in planning ahead. I always love the ashes into jewelry. I really do. I think that's my favorite thing. Uh, thank you. Oh, gosh. Hi, I just want to thank you for the services the other month. I apologize if I was abrupt. It was kind of a shock for me. I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die just yet. Oh. All right. All right, let's see this. Oh, we actually have a choice. Okay. Wait, what? Whoa, what happened? Okay. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard our son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right. I didn't know what he and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. No, no. Hold on. If the son wanted a way, the son wanted a certain way. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront this situation. Yet, yeah, anyways, they're never easy. Rose and Daughters has been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for a cremation, but the family had demanded a traditional burial instead. Fortunately, he didn't ha make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any witnesses sign, uh, sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes. So his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do it as family. Oh, if we have to do it, then there's no choice. Matthew was graciously offered to take this on if you're uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for the funeral we're hosting later this afternoon. Charlie, is this suicide something you're comfortable with dealing with? Let me know here if you need me. Let's do it. Sadly, it freaking sucks because I, like... <sighs> family is just awful for that all right let's clean you up ma'am uh deceased as for yep 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 all right i i want to try to do it without the freaking instructions i think i have to like clean him shave him if i'm right there we go yep we gotta shave get all those donut sprinkles off then we cut him. No, we massage. 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 Eye caps. Boink, boink. And then glue. Boink, boink. And then cotton balls in the mouth. So. There we go. Lotion. There we go. Uh, incision. I just realized it goes in the order. Like, boop, 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 boop. I just realized that. It's so easy. Oh, am I doing that wrong? I'm connecting it, no? There we go. Massage. There we go. That sucks, though, that they're disregarding, like, his wishes in general. That's not really fair, in my opinion, but if we literally can't do anything about it, it's not in our hands anyways, because we personally aren't- should not be involved, but that's awful. Dang. Right, how much more? How much Kool-Aid do you got in your body, dude? It's got all that expired Kool-Aid. Uh, wink, 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 wink. 
Let's get all that apple juice out. That Gatorade. And that monster energy drink. Sweet. All done. I wonder if we're gonna see anyone that's like that knows that what the person wanted. I wonder. Hello. Ooh, a lot of people are upset on this one. I still can't believe he did it. I, I feel like I should have known, you know, been able to do something to stop it. There's no way to know. You can't blame yourself. You wouldn't have wanted that. I know, I know, it just hurts. Aww. Oh man. This hurts a lot. Are these the parents? Hey, are you the buttholes? I heard it wasn't going to be in the open casket. I'm surprised it's public. Usually funerals for these. These circumstances are more private. Public? Oh, like family only, maybe? I wish we were closer. Wow, I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother. Should have played more games with him when he asked. I. Oh, so you guys are the parents. Yeah, you guys are definitely the parents, and the dad's so upset. March 3rd! Holy cow! Oh, I know. We were in February 28th. I was like, I thought we were in December for some reason. Hello? Emails? Time for me to read. My poor throat's gonna be dead after this. Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on. Uh, is this about... Um, you know what? I'm not gonna read this. I'm, it's gonna- this is gonna turn into a bot anyways. So, for the future, if you wanna read it, you know, just pause. I'll scroll through it. Cause it's about another set of culture stuff. And we already read about some way to sort of respect culture. Um, okay. Jen, you're invited to death- to attend Death Cafe. Can't- wait, hold on, let me read the bottom one. Come increase awareness of death with a view of helping people make most of their- Infinite lives. Join us, have a tea, cake, talk with others about our thoughts, fears, illuminations on death. Founder of the Death Cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, when people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate their humanity. Can't really write much now. Have a lot of work I have to do with an inguinal hernia from the 1750s. It's the oldest in our collection and you can't even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. Super cool. Send you a link when we have it cataloged. What is my life? <laughs> what is that sentence I just typed? That's hilarious. But anyway, this event that I'm forwarding you takes place near you. Figured you'd be into it. Might help with the feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you were feeling. Lots of death positive people here. Sounds like it'll be a safe space. That's nice. What the hell? Can I just say... Wait, can I just say first off that this is bullcrap? Ugh, knowing how these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring our emails now. No, okay, I don't really believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all of your business for so long, and this isn't six feet under. And they just swooped in, and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder and than, corpse or, than corpse. Wait, they're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It just feels dirty and exploitive. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam. Emails aren't really the most appropriate. Whoa, th how much are they charging? So they kept this. Oh no, they didn't. Mmm. Gold funeral. Large gathering. Dude, these are for giant freaking groups. We've never had that before. We can't even look at the prices for a quote. Oh, subject to additional fees, payment plans? That's ridiculous. All right, let's see what he is. We're pleased to bring the Rose and Daughters to part of Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. There will be another institution amongst hundreds of other properties owned across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to the Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. culture, there will be a number of changes that will come uh, to Rose and Daughters. And we will send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Uh, glad to be leading the way of Rose and Daughters from now on. Ah, yep, there's all theirs. Managing Funeral Director, Hillside. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well, it was more than I was expecting. 
So she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. Oh. Charlotte, below are the details for the next client, ensuring you follow the request specifications exactly. After you're done, I'll review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. Oh, we have evaluations now? He's not- he's so cold! Okay! This guy sucks! I don't like him already. Hello? Is this Jocelyn? Uh, yeah. I got it. Oh. I got it. Easy. Easy, I say. It's not easy! There you go. Ah, oh, so now we're getting evaluated. That's so cold and, like, calculated more than anything. There we go. How different it's gonna look now is it does it change at all how it looks oh no everything's the same more people I think should we do a vigil at the spot careless drivers swear to god okay she was always so careful wore her helmet signaled used the bike lanes a hole drivers they need to pay attention have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leah. But it's been hard enough on them without asking about the legal ramifications of all this. Yeah, after all this, let's see what we can do to help them. We shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. Oh, that sucks. Let's pay our respects. So glad it was a cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body. I have to go through all of her things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need help, I can help. No, thanks. But, I mean, but no. I don't know. It's so intimate. Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. <laughs> yeah. She was kind of a closed book. Except to you. Yeah. She was special. Oh. <sighs> Glad I'm here. Oh, wow. Just need a glass of wine. And to binge watch something right now. I get that. Just try to distract yourself. March 24th. How much more? I, I did not expect this game to be that big, to, if I'm gonna be honest. I thought this game was like a lot shorter. Alright, how's it going? Oh boy. Uh, what's this about? Why do it? Uh. Oh, home funerals? Oh, like doing it at your house. Never thought about that. That could be interesting. But I'm not gonna read this outside. Or, outside. I'm not gonna read this right now. Home funerals sounds way more interesting. Uh, I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its hind legs like a human being. Charlie, a human being. We as a species have seen the beginning of our end. <laughs> She's freaking hilarious, dude. All right, burial policy. Oh my gosh. What happened here? Hello, I stated in a previous e email, here are the new rules, code of conduct. I expect you to follow from now on, on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage. First and foremost is a required uniform and a strict dress code from now on. Second, most importantly to this is that no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they're properly covered and hidden. Speaking with the customers and the clients, consider the opportunity to upsell we always encourage, always encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase uh, the higher quality package. We find it encouraging to loved ones to think the comfortable and style the deceased as an experience with no price limit on it. This dude's a piece of actual trash. Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased loved ones to pre purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Our partner catering concepts provide high quality food that will be delivered weekly from their factory. Can easily be defrosted. <laughs> This is awful. I expect all the above changes to be instituted effective immediately to ensure a smooth transition to the high quality services. Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work? Uh, yeah. Yes, I, was, I really want mozzarella sticks. I can both be hungry and angry. No one- No, I will not say hangry ever. They didn't change how this looks, but that sucks. You can't even bring food and they were talking about home cooked foods. 
Hello, Charlotte. I reviewed your request on behalf of a potential family inquiring if we have, uh, if we at Hillside Heritage Inc. can and will perform green burials. I should have informed you on this in the beginning, but we do not perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. All employees and subsidiaries of Hillside Heritage Enterprise Inc. must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers, though, so do you try your hardest to convince the families requesting green burials instead to do a traditional burial package complete with embalming caskets and vaults instead. Mm, I entrust you that you won't leave any- Ugh, this guy's a piece of actual garbage. Uh, I'm proud to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprise received a contract with the city to dispose any of any unclaimed bodies. This is an important revenue stream for us, and as sure I'm as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you, Charlotte. Although Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. is being paid a decent wage from the city for these services, cremation is preferred here as it is the more cost efficient of the two options. The first unclaimed body we will be in handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed uh, for this cadaver aside from cremation. Alright! This guy actually is just a horrible human being. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. <sighs> uh, prepare his body. Doesn't seem to have any velvism. It could be damaged cremation. So let's just worry about putting his identity. Okay. Oh, that's it. That sucks. It's also unclaimed bodies, too. Dang. Alright. What did I do? I should really check how long this game is. Alright. So let's get all the things. It's a very dull uh, vase, too, I just realized. Like, this guy, this company does not, and, I, and it's true, like, there are companies that, that don't care about the families or the whole part of the grieving process. They just care about the money that they can leak off of you, leech off of you. It's just awful. Are my tattoos covered? I knew I had tattoos. No one's here. That's so sad. That's, and that happens. At least, no, no, no one was here. I was here. I was here and I gave them my support. Oh, we're cleaning up there now. Hello. Let's check our email. All right, all right. What do you want? Oh, man. Uh. What? Okay, let's see. Uh, subscribers everywhere. Do not, not, and not drop a. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop of drink. Water cremation. Oh. Oh. And my game crashed. Not game crashed. What happened? Why is it doing that? Alright. Uh. Water cremation? Uh. That's very interesting. I would have never thought about that. Alright. I kissed her. Dating a special effects makeup artist, and she is like the coolest person I've ever met in my life. She totally loves Ava's possession and was equally freaked out by the possession scenes, but so utterly delighted at the idea of a support group for people who have been possessed. That was your best recommendation in a while, Charlie. You were slipping there, and I, I was getting worried you had lost your taste. But yeah, her name is Lily. She is super death positive, is, isn't freaked out by my work, and also isn't too into like... The last dude I saw. Jason? Michael? God, I can't remember. Just really like spending time around her. Can't stop. I can talk about whatever I want. It's never a conversation stopper. She totally gets what I mean when I say that I like working with death and spending so much time thinking about death actually makes me happier. It makes everything else feel so much more worth it, you know? Memento Mori or whatever they taught us in that one poetry class we took. We just clicked. Fe uh, feels good fun and affirming like dating should be i'm thinking of taking her to maple meadows she's super into roller coasters and i think the idea of sharing cotton candy or maybe not i don't want to throw up on the rides is sickingly cute then maybe i'll kiss her on top of the ferris wheel and be super corny and cliche for once in my life anywho enough about me for now still kind of in shock from your last email do you think you're going to do it 
You know you have my support. 100% no matter what you decide. Ooh, are we thinking about quitting? Is that what we're thinking about? Charlie, it's official. Put in my two weeks notice. You know how unhappy I am working for Mega Corporation 101. My skills, especially my driving ones, are useful in other professions. I'm not worried about myself. But you know, but you, you I'm worried about. You're too good for this corporate, corporate scum. You actually care about the people you work with and for. Don't let them defeat you, okay? Matthew. Aw, P.S. I'll bring beers over next week. We can talk about it more freely. Can we be with Matthew? He's so freaking cute. Um, hello all. Funeral home for my wife? Oh, not his wife. I was like, dang. Um, we are thrilled to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprise Inc. subsidiary my gosh, signed a contract with Morning Valley Hospital, allowing us to access to all the cadavers that come through their pediatric and maternity wards. We're excited for the opportunity to work with Morning Valley Hospital, which takes over 100,000 patients and receives over 15 million in funding and donations annually. There will be no doubt a boon for Hill- Oh, cadaver? Dude, this guy does not care. Oh. Dear Mr. Grant, regarding the last time we spoke, my daughter and I would still prefer to host a home funeral for ourselves and keep my wife here until she's ready to be buried. I just want to make sure she's taken care of. Her heart attack was so sudden. I We don't know what to do. We just want to make sure she has the proper send-off. Thanks. Oh no, and then he just freaking slides in. That scummy little snake, dude. I understand your desire to keep your wife at home, but I assure you, the best way to honor your wife is through a traditional funeral package instead. I promise uh, you, your wife's funeral with us will be beautiful. An intimate gathering where all of her beloved friends and family can come together, say their goodbyes. Standard embalming will allow for everyone to view your wife, showing that everyone can see her one final time as she was. Beautiful, peaceful, and courageous. This dude. Letting us take care of the food with our prepared food services will ensure you don't have a single thing to worry about on this day. Oh, I hate him! Your You and your daughters are going through a hard time. Let us hear- Yeah. And why don't you give us your life savings too? Yeah, he takes it. Okay, we'll take the traditional. Mm -mm. Dude. Oh. Register. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Register a business? Oh, are we going to register our own funeral service? 11 permits. Oh, that's going to be really cool if we can do that. Oh, that would be so nice. Yes, let's do it. I see we're not able to convince the dick my... Okay, I did not mean this. The Dimka family to take the standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order not to lose the sale. Please read the enclosed emails for this for a lesson on how to properly upsell. Ups. Don't want to see that we've lost any customers because of your refusal to upsell. That's part of your job. No, it's not. It's actually not. Oh. Oh, I don't like this man. I don't like him. He's evil. Evil. Greedy little monster. Greedy little bug. What a piece of scum. Alright. I got it. I got it. I know what to do. She, this character's actually really pretty. Man, a heart attack. That's so scary. Alright. Uh, massage. 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 Uh, eye eye. Glue glue. Uh, mouth. Sewing. And then, mis no, lotion. How do I do it again? There we go. I don't know why it takes such a freaking long time. See, like this noise reminds me of Mortuary Assistant. I'm still so tempted to play, but I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. Terrifying. Terrifying game. Alright, there you go. That would be cool. Are we actually going to end off like owning a business of some kind? Maybe we move to England? Or we hire the purse driver? Maybe. Tired of already, I'm already tired of working for this bozo. Alright, and then this. Oh, I didn't get it all out. Dang it! Oh, you can just like keep the tubes in them? Oh. Make them look like aliens. 
<sighs> they did not want this, dude. So freaking frustrating. This feels so impersonal. She would have hated this. Yeah, but I don't know. They must have had their reasons. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. What did you think of the trailer I sent you? Oh, yeah. I heard that show is so good. I saw the video of the one kid actor doing karaoke. Yeah, she would have not wanted this, and they freaking- We ruined it for them. They never wanted this, dude. Eating frozen sandwiches? Do you think we did the right thing? I feel, not, I feel bad for not doing what mom asked for. I know, honey, but what that Chad guy said seemed right. We don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her rot. <laughs> yeah, I just want mom to know I loved her. Wish I hadn't yelled at her before. Shh, it's okay. She knew you loved her. Fights happen. Please don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to miss her. Me too. Oh, man! Ugh! Freaking sucks. Are we at least still providing, like, the mental, like, grieving process counselors? It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioning on too high. Yeah. Let's go on a walk later. It's really nice out. It'll be good to stretch my legs. Oh, man. I'm starving. Why do these things always make me so hungry? You're always hungry. Well, ain't that right? I'm freaking hungry right now, dude. August 30th. Man, it's almost been an entire year. <gasps> yeah! New! Let's go! Oh my gosh, yeah! Okay, 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 congratulations! Charlie, dear, I'm so proud of you. I knew there was something special when I hired you for Rose and Daughters. If there's anything I can help... Wait, hold on. Magnolia Forest. <gasps> Is this our place? Home funeral. A thousand dollars all inclusive. Green burials! Ah, oh, and direct cremation. If it's a oh gosh, we provide a three by three plot. Um, we believe in being transparent about our pri pri prices and practices. We are happy to explain all of our prices, work within your budget, and hope we can make you feel comfortable and confident in your decisions. Let us know if we have if we have any oh natural burial park. That's great. Oh, I love this. I'm always happy to help. You'll never believe what new job I'm working now. <laughs> hey, hey, Charlie, when I first became a hearse driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering, it was sympathizing. I respectfully disagree, and thankfully, I concentrated on my driving skills, since now I'm working on wor working as a, wait for it, bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie, can you believe that? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. <laughs> I didn't know how else to tell you. For some reason, I was worried you'd think less of me, but I don't know why. You've never been the judgmental kind. And besides, corpses are way easier to deal with than children. Screaming children, might I add. I actually love it. These kids can be pretty cute, but don't tell Amy that I told you that. She's always harping on me for not having any kids and for, calling, for, uh, and for being all cynical about them. <laughs> Congrats on your new business, Charlie. I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. Oh, I love that. Congratulations on your new business. Charlie, I'm so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year for you. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase, but you stuck through it all like a champ. You deserve this. Finally being your own boss is a great move for you. No more having to explain anything you don't want to. I'm trying to not to be too cheesy right now. Can't wait to be home next week for our visit. Yay! And to check out your new space. Always, Jen. P.S. Have you heard about these green burial pods? When I find the link in my one of million tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. Today is the day already, isn't it? Can't believe how quickly uh, this has come up. Thank you for understanding and for your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1 p.m. Yay! Oh, this is so good! So what do we do? Oh, and our tattoos are showing again! <gasps> oh! Is this- this is good! We're doing an open burial. No, oh, but like a green burial. This hurts. I thought it'd be easier, but it's not. It hurts so much. But I want to thank you for helping me give her the funeral she always wanted. Oh, good! Anyway, I think we're getting- we're ready to get started now. Was really fun that was good it taught me a lot I hope it taught 
a lot of people who were watching a lot. Mortician's Tale. That's how every- that's how- I, I learned a lot of different things from that. That was great. That was a really, really, really good game. I had it on my thing for a while. I just didn't know, like, when to freaking, um, play it. <laughs> 